Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. The Atheist Experience is live August 31st, 31st, 2003. I'm your host, Martin Wagner, Ashley Perrion, my co host, Ashley. and Mark Lowy. Very happy to have you back after Good a while. with you, hiatus. Martin and Ashley. Yeah. Folks, we have no clue what like the last two minutes of video were. Uh, they uh, just, they're just clearly another uh, <laughs> more fun at ACAC, I'll tell you. But well, we're live, we are here, and we appreciate your joining us. This show is sponsored, as always, by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. ACA has weekly meetings meetings every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels, which is located downtown at 307 West 5th Street between Guadalupe and Lavaca, except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series in the mayor room of the Austin History Center at 9th and Guadalupe. Our next lecture will be this coming Sunday, next Sunday, a week from today, and our speaker will be Jeff D., a host of the Nonprofits, former host of this program, speaking on the subject of trans Humanism, very interesting, uh, uh, fledgling, fledgling field of, of scientific and philosophical endeavors. So uh, that'll be uh, most interesting to talk about. Okay, other ACA uh, that we do is uh, Godless Gamers, of course, every Monday night at the home of Russell Glasser and Virginia Glasser, and ACA Happy Hour, which takes place Thursday evenings uh, at Antonio's Tex-Mex, which is near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. Uh, it starts about 7.30, Thursday evenings, but... Uh, uh, people tend to trickle in all night long. Uh, look for the sign, uh, the little fish sign, or the little lungfish sign, Darwin fish on the... fish? Well, that's what they were, right? Crawling out of the... That's what they were, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's how you identify who we are at Antonio's Tex-Mex. So that's Thursday evening, happy hour, uh, just a fun little evening get-together. Okay, The Nonprofits is a bi-weekly internet radio show uh, hosted by Jeff D., uh, also with uh, Vic Farrow and... Russell Glasser, and that is every other Saturday uh, on the atheistnetwork.com website. Most recent episode was yesterday, and the next one is going to be September 13th. Um, I think we have a title for that, but Russell will find it. And that, like I said, it's at atheistnetwork.com, or if uh, you go to our website on the radio show page, uh, Russell has provided a link to the live feed. And that is uh, on uh, every other Saturday afternoon starting at 2 and so, uh, good show, a lot of fun, and they have a live interactive uh, chat room feature that uh, they keep trying to get more people to join in on because uh, it's uh, you know it's a contest that they have going on or something. There we are, Saturdays at two p.m. bi-weekly, and uh, enjoy. University Atheists and Agnostics uh, is getting ready to start up. We think the fall semester, um, but we still haven't gotten any information from uh, Charles Tavany about uh, new meeting times, meeting places. They usually have been meeting on Friday afternoons, uh, but uh, so they may continue uh, that schedule, but when we know of the next meeting time and place, we'll let you know. UAA is a very successful uh, UT student and faculty organization for atheists, and uh, you can contact uaa at mail.utexas.edu if you are a UT student or faculty member, and I'm sure Charles will be delighted to get information to you about UAA. So, there you go. I think that takes care of announcements, and before we get into the news, though, I wanted to discuss a little bit of old business. Uh, last week on the show, the, the whole show was about um, you know, Judge Roy Moore and this absurd uh, you know, Ten Commandments monument circus that he had going on in Alabama. And, you know, the court finally has, you know, or prevailed, as it were. Yeah, and, uh, they basically they came hung, in, you know, pulled him out. Yeah, by, you know. Wheeled the thing out. And right. It's still in the building, which is a bit of a concern. You know, I mean, we're it, it's stored away somewhere, and we're wondering if it's there so that they can do some sort of boondoggle to try to, you know. And, of course, I have seen a couple articles by the religious right saying that that is, uh, they're almost positioning it like a partial victim. It's not out of the building yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, folks. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, you know, they'll just, uh, you know, the, the, the desperation to transform America into yeah. this uh, theocracy that uh, they have just will will stop at nothing, yeah. and they, they will they will twist anything to uh, to make it seem as if it's a victory for themselves. But anyway, during that whole show, we, we talked about many things, and, and all the callers called in and chimed in one opinion after another, and. And, but I went through, I actually went through the Ten Commandments at one point, because one of the yeah. claims that the theocrats make uh, is that, uh, well, all the laws of our land come from the yeah. Ten Commandments. Yeah. It's, the, it's the foundation of all of our laws. And so I went through the Ten Commandments, and we picked out essentially two of the ten yeah. that you can actually point to and say, okay, that's a law and that's a law. 
Yeah. And the others are not laws. But we got into the subject of coveting. You know, thou shalt not covet. And I, I made a, I made the point that, well, coveting is, in a free enterprise, you know, in a free market economy, that's, you want people to do that. That's, I covet good food. Yeah, that too. Or, but uh, we got, uh, um, we got a good letter from a viewer, uh, a fellow named Ken Wiegand, who wrote in and basically mentioned that, well, of course, coveting is this thing that you, know, you, you don't want people to, to yeah. go crazy. I mean, it's, it is certainly something that can be misused. I mean, exactly. you know, people if you go overboard. If you covet things to the level of being obsessive, yeah. right, and then, you know, that makes you do things like become a stalker or, or a thief yeah. or what have you. And so, so of course. But we have other laws to deal with yeah, those things. Right. But, uh, and even though that's a sound, uh, um, intellectual point and a valid concern, right? Um, the whole point is that, uh, you know, we don't have a law saying yeah. you can't want what the other guy's got. Yeah. You know, because that would be like, fuck crime. Yeah. You know, just you be can't careful just, about acting on that. Sure, point. exactly. So you can't, so. You, you know, you can't, you can't just make a law saying you, you can't even think yeah. about coveting another, yeah. you know, so, so that's really, that's the salient point there. But certainly, you know, coveting is a thing that can be done. It's just like, you know, we don't, again, we don't have a law against lying, although except, you know, in yeah. certain situations, like if you're under oath, that becomes perjury. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the, the commandment, thou shalt not bear false witness, can't really be looked at as any sort of a, a law yeah. that has been instituted into our constitution yeah. and into our, our, our uh, jurisprudence because, of course, you know, it's, you know, I could walk up to you and say, hi, Ashley, you know, yeah. I'm from Jupiter. Yeah. And I would be lying, yeah. but you know you can't throw me in jail for that. You, yeah. you know, I would. You can't throw somebody in jail just for Mental saying hospital, stupid stuff. But that maybe, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, though, I did see a story this week. I don't have it with me, but mm -hmm. um, you remind me uh, about knowledge of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. They did a survey. It was a very informal thing. Obviously, mm -hmm. just reporter goes out in town with his list of Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. asked twenty people to name as many as they can. Only two people got all ten. Mm -hmm. Several of them got zero. Not even thou shalt not kill. Now, how can how can you possibly miss? You know, you can't steal and kill. You know, I mean, the other ones kind of get a little bit fuzzy sometimes. You may not remember them, but yeah, I mean, those, well, those are the biggies. Well, now we're, we're all these all these were. You know, it's quite possible that some of these interviewees could have not been raised in a Christian tradition. They could belong to another religion. That is very yeah. possible. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to ask but me again, what the Muhammad says, people, says you know, yeah, only twenty. Now, again, mm -hmm. these are ones that are being posted on government buildings. Sure. And they even, where they were doing it, behind the people they were interviewing, they had the plaque up with the Ten Commandments. So, like, the, the, behind them. So, like, don't turn around. Exactly. But, yeah, exactly. This will be a I mean, they had this one lady that they said, you know, oh, she, you know, said, oh, yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm a big believer in the Bible. I've been studying it for ten years. I know them all. No problem. I said, okay, go for it. She got seven. <laughs> so. yeah, but that's better than most. It's, it's better than most, yeah. yeah. But still. Yeah. She wasn't using hindsight. No. Apparently. <laughs> But the, tr the trick is, um, th this, of course, is how the theocrats are able to get away with telling people the Ten Commandments are the basis of America and, and the Constitution exactly. and all of our law, and people will just believe them, right? Because that's, you know, what people... And from the Bible, it can't be all yeah, that bad. People generally will just believe what authority figures tell them. And yeah. so if you have a guy, especially a minister, right, yeah. a preacher from behind a podium, people are, are out there in the pews trusting this man to tell them the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And But if he knows that they're ignorant of certain yeah. things, he's going to push his political agenda. So and so we'll just tell them... Yeah, I mean, all of our laws come from the Ten Commandments, and people go, okay. So can we? Go, he can do that because they don't know. Can we so go like, ahead and get a Ten Commandments monument up? And say we want to put a monument up. And they're like, okay, fine, that's great. And then we put up the actual ones that the Bible calls the Ten Commandments, <laughs> which is you know, keep the Feast of Weeks and Thou shalt not eat uh, unleavened bread and stuff like that. It just goes on and on about all these wacky stuff. Most of them yeah. are dietary <laughs> restrictions. Yeah. Um, have those up, and you know, just see exactly yeah. who catches on. I mean, the Exodus. We've got a couple of people, you know, on the on the opening day looking at it. Something's not quite right. Yeah. The, the the Exodus 34 the, version. Exactly. Of the, the ones that are actually started. listed. These are the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Keep them holy. <clears throat> the, the second set after you know Moses came exactly. down and exactly. busted and the yeah. So yeah, yeah they're different. The yeah, the, the replacement set of the Ten Commandments <laughs> that Moses got from God. You know, most people don't know that part of the story. Yeah. That those Ten Commandments are like seven of them are different. Yeah, they're significant. The first different. set. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Anyway, but anyway, so that was uh, just one of our emails that we got, and we appreciate our viewer emails. So just letting everybody know, this is a live call-in show. Uh, every week, we you know we've been on now. We've been on the air for about six years, and uh, maybe even a little more than that. And we take live uh, phone calls, which we will get to in a few minutes. Um, but we never manage to get to everybody because the phones just back up, and, and, and unlike 
a lot of the Christian shows, you know, if it, the minute somebody disagrees with us, we don't like hang up on you, right? I mean, we like for people to call and disagree with us, and and uh, you know, let's see if you, why we're here. Yeah, if you think you've got a stumper to hit us with, go right ahead. <laughs> I mean, we like that. We increase, we're here to have fun debate, but we never get to everybody. So that's why we set up the viewer email address, which is tv at atheist community dot org. And uh, we, um, like I said, the, the best emails that we get, you know, we answer them on the air. But we answer all the emails, uh, you know, personally, if we can. I try to answer all of them that we get. And uh, Russell will, uh, when he's not doing something else, will find the title that has the viewer email address on it and put it up there for you to read, too. Okay, so uh, I think that takes care of that. So, um, on to the news. Ashley, what's going on in the world? Okay. Got a light news this week. Uh, light news week. Okay. A good thing, possibly. Uh, a very good thing, considering what's actually in the news. Um, first off, uh, all the child molesters, they're not out of the world yet. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa, a priest accused of keeping child pornography on a church computer pleaded guilty Friday in federal court to receiving pictures of children engaged in sexual conduct. Uh, the Reverend Richard Poster, 38, faces a maximum of 15 years in prison, up to a quarter million dollar in fine when he's sent sentenced November 21st. Okay. Um, also, in addition to that, Cincinnati Roman Catholic Archdiocese, meanwhile, is considering what it should do about a retired 96-year-old priest uh, who officials say has admitted to molesting a boy 90 years ago. Or four. Not 90 years <laughs> I'm talking about your grandfather, Father. <laughs> it's 40 years. Hey, well, he cornered me in the back of the transept. And, well, I've never it was 40 years. Understand. It was 40 years. Okay, there we go. Um, nice. The original guy did enter into a... Uh, a the plea, basically. Um, he's going. He's playing and he's guilty. But um, he is... Uh, wow. It's slightly lesser account, but it's still... Uh, the same time and the same possible fines. Good grief. So again, up to a quarter million dollars and 15 years in the slammer. Wow. So, and we see what happened to the last priest, Gogan, who yeah managed to get himself into prison. Yeah, not yeah. He so. somebody did a did a uh, um, Jeffrey Dahmer on him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ugly sorted the scenes, but yeah. it just keeps. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I missed the first part. Was this guy again? Is he another one part of the Catholic scandal, or is he a completely different guy? Uh, no, this is. Uh, I don't believe he was anyone who's. Mm -hmm. I I don't recognize the name Reverend Richard Poster. Okay. And I don't know if he has actually molested anyone. It was about child pornography. Okay. Well, if he's the Reverend, then he, I don't think he would be Catholic. I don't think they call their their okay. priests Reverend. Yeah. It's always Father this and yeah, and, yeah. You know, so. so. Well, outside outside of, of that, so. then it continues outside of the Catholic Church. Who to well, thunk it? Well, you know. Yeah. And again, these are you know not to say, we don't. Every time we bring this up, we always get some email or some callers. Yeah. Like, you, you guys can't blame the actions of you know those and think that all Christians. Are. Of course, we don't think that all of Christians course. are of these few of swine who yeah. who do these crimes, yeah. right? But the point is that the the argument is constantly being made to us that one needs to have religion in one's life in order to have any kind of a moral compass at all. And being religious makes you morally superior to people who aren't religious. Exactly. And each one of these these incidents simply puts the lie to that claim that you gotta have religion. That if you're religious, you'll you'll be less likely to do bad immoral stuff than exactly. otherwise. Exactly. Clearly it's not the case. Yeah. You know, especially when you have ministers who are supposedly the men of the cloth, the authorities in the yeah. church. You know, the the uh, you know out there preaching the word, doing, you know, all of these things. And of course it's not Child molesting. We have, of course, there are other crimes that have been you know, by other guys in the past. Whether it's you know just swindling, you know, just yeah. taking money from people under false pretenses. Robert Tilton, all those people running scams. And not everyone's like that. It's a very small minority. And of course, these guys are uh, are in a big embarrassment to the to the church as a whole. But yeah, you know, yeah. that's why we report these things. You know, it's yeah. like again, just just keep your eyes just, open. All right. So. Okay. Next one. Uh, this is actually a story that started two years ago. Um, and it's it's now coming to coming to I guess coming to fruit as a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a woman in Nigeria uh, who is thirty two years two years old. Mm -hmm. She had a child two years ago oh, out of wedlock. Yes, in a predominantly Islamic country. Right, because that was considered adultery. Mm -hmm. The sentencing for that is to be stoned to death. And, yeah, and this they is, still haven't overturned it. They still haven't said you know. Is still on no appeal. Problem. 
Uh, yep, it, it's it, people are still, you know, doing petitions. They got human rights groups over there trying to get this, uh, get this out of there. Yeah, and uh, the government is saying no. Sorry. Now, um, well, I don't know if the United Nations is going to have balls if this happens. Okay, to like have a draft a formal like. Yeah. Condemnation exactly. of, of Nigeria. Human rights violation. Yeah. Like uh, like I like sanctions against the country. Without yeah. money. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Uh, economic sanctions and uh like cut off you know yeah. Just yeah. this, that or the other yeah. you know, way of I mean they they obviously Nigeria seriously needs to be threatened. Of okay? course. They don't just need to be it's like, hey, with this, this is really mean. You shouldn't do it. You know, just get get the human rights groups out of there. Yeah. You know, they're not doing any good. I mean we need there there needs to be actual pressure applied to this yeah. government. Yeah. See if you don't get rid of this evil corrupt Sharia exactly. law based exactly. on this crazy superstition that you have, although okay, okay, we can't say that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but you know, if you do this to this person yeah. In the violation of human rights, okay? Yeah. We're going to censure, you know, exactly. we're going to condemn the whole You're country. You're not just going to walk away from it. Yeah. Could so. be that somebody in the government over there is trying to um, get money from others who don't want it to happen. And, uh, How? and well, you know, like, uh, yeah, we're going to let the law take effect unless uh, somebody can bribe us. Can no, no, so it's extortion, so they're trying to extort. Well, to, there's certainly a lot of people around the world who are concerned about it, and they know that. Yeah. And so what they're holding out for, uh, have you heard, has, has any sort of offer been made? made it? Has, 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 okay, tell you what, give us, like, you know, give us, you know, bajillions of dollars in aid or, or food or whatever. <laughs> I'm sure uh, enough money could uh, make a difference over there. Just uh, as it can anywhere, almost anywhere. No, but that's like, give, that's called giving into terror. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I agree. And yeah. so in, it's, it's certainly of, not the route to go. Yeah, I know, Instead of bribing, if I were the UN, I would threaten... You know, um, yeah. How about no money? Withdrawing money. That's yeah. right. Yeah. How about no money? How about no aid? How about no trade? Exactly. Yeah. How about like a complete cut off, a complete trade embargo yeah, from the whole rest of the world? So. so. Uh, All right. Well, so this is still then. Uh, is it being appealed? What's uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's still going in and out of the laws. Um, I think this is actually supposed to happen in uh, November. Okay. I want to say is when it's actually supposed to take place. Okay. Where's the brave Bush administration, the liberators of Iraq, yeah. the Iraqi people? Okay. Where are these people? And and where's our administration in terms of speaking out against this thing that's about to happen? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, apparently not yeah. in Nigeria. Well, so what, has, what does Bush have to say about this? And yeah. what does Condoleezza Rice have to say about what's about to happen to this woman? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. So. But like I say, on, I, I believe it's November. Um, That's when they're like, going to do it? Assuming everything goes as planned, according to the government... Then she will be buried up to her neck in sand and stoned to death. Oh, that's nice. So, okay. well, human rights out the door. Well, so. well, that's what you have when you have theocracy. Exactly. You know? Again, when you have religion unchecked, just by anything else, you're going to get whacked like, so. like sanity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Final news story that we have. Um, this is in Warlone, uh, Warland, Wyoming. Ah. Uh, school board members want theories other than evolution, such as creationism, of course, <sighs> again, taught in science classes, and only sexual abstinence, not how you use contraceptives, taught in health classes. Okay, hasn't it already been proven that the abstinence-only programs don't work? That they are no more effective and in, in some ways less effective than just plain old straightforward sex education. No, I know sex education is very much more effective than yeah. than what you know drivel they're passing off here. Yeah. Um, basically, but, I mean, but, but, but there have been, but there's actually been research. Sexual, don't have any sexual relationships until you are married, and that's the only way. Yeah. Um, as good advice as that is. Well, assuming that it's as good. effective as it is, if used correctly. Um, then it's... Well, I don't know that it's, it's... I mean, why is it necessarily good advice to say don't have sex until you're married? Some people just don't want to get married. True. You know? True. I mean... Uh, yes, uh, some well, people. It, okay, it's not. Okay. It is not that. Well, it is not well the cool. idea that you should only have sex when you're in, a, you know, a serious relationship with one person, and and that's kind of thing. I mean, that that's again, there there is no from bad. A, there's no, nothing STD's, wrong with that. Well, from an S, there's nothing. However, wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you know, if you're gonna, it's highly ineffective. Well, if you're gonna teach from from a, a moralistic standpoint, yeah. whereas I think the purpose of health class should simply be to teach the health risks. Exactly. Of, of not just 
I mean, any sort of sexual behavior. I mean, exactly. you can get clapped from your spouse. Exactly. Okay? You can you get just diseases a, from your spouse. You won't just be a bad person who won't yeah. welcome in the church. You could die. Yeah. I mean, you know, just... just so. Um, so there are all sorts of just basic health risks involved in any sort of activity, but including sexual activity, no. that can happen to you whether you're just doing it with your spouse or not. So what does it matter? No. No. So. I mean, so it's not the, it's not the whole point of... Um, you know, the, the, the purpose of, especially in a public school, you know, is to, in a health class, you teach the health questions. You teach those aspects. Yeah. You know, and you don't, and, and then leave it up to the parents and they did to have instill a the moral guidelines of, Yeah, and they know, did have a couple of students that set those examples at these, at these meetings. Mm -hmm. And they basically said, you know, look, we need, you know, we want to know, and we need to know what are the actual consequences here. Sure. Not just a moralistic standpoint, yeah. but what are the actual consequences? What are the diseases? What is the problem here? And again, they're not going to teach any of that. Because huh. huh. again, it's abstinence only. That you know, that's the only thing that matters. Mm -hmm. Condoms don't work. Don't try them. Period. And, and again, these people don't comprehend the, just the mind of the basic teenager. Exactly. With the, with the way, the, the best way to get a teenager not to, to do something, the best way to get a teenager to do something you don't yeah. want them to do, exactly. is to be like, no, don't do this because it's bad. I know. And be like, Ooh. And, and why not do it? Because I said so. Yeah. If mom and dad don't want me to do that, it must be cool, right? I mean, because I mean, these are exactly. the rebellious years, exactly, right? So exactly. it's it's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, these people just don't know. They're creating like this whole new puritanism that there's, is going to have a massive backlash against. Yeah, you know, that's all they're doing. Yeah. It's absurd. So their new policy, uh, the recommendation for sex education reads, it shall be the policy of Washaki County School District Number 1 when teaching sex education. The, curricul the curriculum shall be based on abstinence only. Okay, what curriculum? What curriculum do you have based on abstinence only? Other yeah, basically, uh, don't do it. Yeah. I mean, where do you go from there? So. That's it. Abstinence. Uh, don't do it. Yeah. I mean, so, now you got a free study. Why not? Oh, because it's like you know against the Ten Commandments. <laughs> That's great. You know. Uh, let me see. Also endorsed was a recommendation for teaching biology, or well, let's say not teaching biology. Uh, um, it should be the policy when teaching Darwin's theory of evolution that it is only a theory and not a fact. Darwin. Uh, I'm so sick of hearing that I could scream. <laughs> These people are clueless. They're exactly. idiots. They don't even know what the word theory means. Exactly. Uh, I'm so sick of people who are completely uneducated <laughs> making these pronouncements like, oh, we're experts. Okay, it's only a theory. When you okay. clearly don't know what to yeah. smeg you're talking about. Yeah, some guy with a big white beard pulled it out of his ass. And so that's all it is. No, a theory in science, that's not what a theory is. Yeah. And all a theory is an, is an opinion, right? That's what they think. Ac according yeah. to the popular opinion, it's just a kind of cool yeah. idea. A theory does not mean wild guess in yeah. science. Yeah. In, in real life, in, you know, like in terms of just day-to-day -day activities yeah. that don't involve that kind of thing, you could say, well, I have a theory that, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I get home, the dogs will have chewed up uh, the pillows on my sofa. Well, I mean, that's, okay, that's different than a scientific theory. <laughs> in, in science, what you have is this hierarchy of certainty. Yeah. Okay. And you have, like, a hypothesis, and then you have a theory, and then, yeah. you know, what have you. But, and, and to be a theory in science, you don't get to call yourself, am I right, Mark, Mr. Scientist on the panel, that you don't get to call your idea a theory unless you've got, like, whopping great amounts of evidence behind it. You have to have experimental data. A few peer-reviewed papers. And you have to be able to make predictions that, so far as you know, work well. Okay. Creationism can never make a prediction. What can they predict other than, this was made? Intelligence behind this. Yeah. That's that's not even a prediction of anything. Well, it's not falsifiable. I mean, it's it's sort of like you can look yeah. at anything and say, well, yeah, you know, this. Yeah. Because prove, prove it wrong. When you ask the intelligent design crowd, I mean, and and we've done this on the show before, we've had callers call up, and we are like, and we ask them, okay, give us an idea of what you think a non-God designed universe would look like. You know, they generally they can't do it. Yeah. In order to, chaos. In order to comprehend what design even means as a concept. You have to have a frame of reference. You have to understand, you know, what design is versus non-design. Like, in order to understand what it means to be cold, like inside the studio, okay, you have to have an idea of what it means to be not cold. So the, when you're cold, you can say, gee, I'm cold. You know, you're, well, how, how do you know you're cold? Well, because I don't, I feel differently than I feel when I walk outside, you know, in August in yeah. Texas. You know, you have to, you have to have, you have to know what these differences are. You know, and you can't really do that with design in nature because, you know, you say, oh, well, anything could be an example of design in nature. Yeah. So the rest of that statement is? Yeah. Even something that made no sense could make it be an example of design in nature. You say, well, I could just be a, career, a designer that's 
you know, has a weird sense of humor. You know? <laughs> I mean, the, or it's insane. It was designed in such a way that you can't tell it was designed. Ah, see? So. You could even say that, right? So, so. Uh, teachers sorry, shall be allowed in a neutral and objective manner to introduce... <laughs> To introduce all scientific theories of origin, mm -hmm. I wonder about all. Mm -hmm. What about the one where the uh, hippopotamus farted out the universe? <laughs> it's on the back of a turtle. Can they teach those? Yeah. Um, yeah are they going to teach the, what the Raelians say? Are exactly. they going to teach what the exactly. Are they going to teach what the, the Sumums? <laughs> which is that, that, that the universe is the result of an orgasm from God. Exactly. God basically masturbated the universe into existence. This is a cult in Utah. And well, you they see, actually, they, they can't teach that one because that would be health class. And they can't teach oh, that in health class. See, if only God had abstained, <laughs> we wouldn't be here. <laughs> if only God had had one of these abstinence-only classes. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're all kinds of wacky... Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, students may be allowed to discuss all aspects of con of controversy surrounding the lack of scientific evidence in support of the theory of evolution. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Like, objective. I, I like yeah. how they say that you can you you can talk about all the th theories, yeah. such as the lack of evidence yeah. for evolution. Hint, hint. And 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 we're totally objective. Exactly. About this, exactly. Yeah. They, they are real scientists. We're completely here. unbiased. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, several people addressed Please the Please tell me this is a little pissant town in Wyoming and it's not the whole state. Uh, it's Worland, Wyoming is where the story, stu uh, the story came from. Okay. And, so they basically uh, they have a cow and they have a feed store. And it and did say <laughs> it shall be the policy of Washakie County School District Number 1. Right. Well, so yeah. apparently it's one school district. Yeah. Which hopefully, yeah, is a you know one light town. Okay. Well, the NCS clearly missed the boat on these guys. Cause, uh, yeah. Well, I was, uh, I've been, we're going to get into something in here in a minute that's going to segue from this yeah. and then we'll go right into your thing, Mark. Uh, but uh, the uh, um, in Colorado, a fellow named Victor Stenger, uh, we were talking, uh, there's a member of the uh, atheists I think it's the AA chapter in Colorado is on our mailing list. Okay. And when the State Board of Education yeah. here, which we're actually going to talk about next Sunday, uh, the State Board of Education uh, textbook hearings are coming up on the 10th. And uh, the focus is going to be on biology and what have you. And of course, the. Biology and health, Yeah, biology and health. And the, um, you know, the creationists, uh, you know, the, the fundamentalists are, again, trying to, uh, you know, get intelligent design. Yeah. But, but here in Texas, there's this massive movement of, of, of actual scientists and people who know what science says yeah you know and and we're really gonna f and who are really gonna fight this there was a um well, very well attended press conference about a week or so ago okay. you know saying like keep science in the science books yeah and this thing coming up on the 10th i'm testifying you know, russell glasser's testifying we have at least half a dozen members of our group testifying okay. you're gonna be there but you're gonna be talking about something else yeah well we need to uh as scientists and people who are who base you know predictions on science we need to fight against those who would pass off fiction as fact. Yeah. And unfortunately, well, you know, I'm sure that our side will be re well represented at the biology textbook hearings, but we also need to fight a little bit against the Texas um, Education Agency, which mm. on the uh, math and science tax tests has made some mistakes. Yeah, tell us about this. There's a, this is an actual, what's the tax test for first? Well, for the, uh, the tax test is uh, a what they call the new state tests that kids will be required at the 11th grade to pass in a year or two in order to graduate from high school. Of course, I've been, cons I've been concerned for a long time about the poor performance of American kids on, in math and science compared internationally. So this year I decided to take a look at the actual um, 11th grade science test uh, just to see what is the general level of the of the questions being asked. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that I would find some errors in the test and in the answer key. And of course I made the uh, Texas Education Agency aware of the errors mm -hmm. and they have now had time to think about it and pass it by their reviewers and they claim that the, there are no errors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but but you found some actual questions. I guess we'll find out. You've actually you found some actual questions in this test where the answers that are given as the correct answers are Abs the wrong answers. Absolutely. And in some cases, like where they're multiple choice, you found some where none of the multiple choice answers are right. Uh, I found one question on the grade eleven science test. Uh, question eleven. Uh, the the state chooses a wrong answer, mm -hmm. and there's a perfectly good correct answer available. Mm -hmm. On, and that, that has to do with a frog, the, the force that a frog exerts on the ground as it leaps. Mm 
Hmm. And uh, basically, the state forgot to factor in the force due to gravity, which acts on the frog even when the frog <laughs> isn't trying to leap. You know, see, that's there's a problem. They didn't ask the frog. <laughs> yeah, that's what they really needed to do, I think. And then uh, there's another one. Uh, so uh, these are like these are like you know word problems, right? And yeah, they're and, multiple choice. Yeah, and and one does have to do a little and... calculation on some of them. Sure, right. Uh, and then uh, what's the most egregious one that you've seen? Oh, there's there there's several pretty egregious ones. There's uh -huh. that frog question where right. the state. Uh, it's a perfectly valid question. It's just that the state chose the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. uh, they. Uh, I guess they thought that all kids had to do was plug in the two numbers that were state, the two quantities that were stated in the problem statement mm -hmm. into a certain formula that was given at the beginning of the test, mm. and that gives a, a that gives an amount of force. However, that's not the way to get the answer to the problem because they forgot to factor in the force due to gravity. That the, yeah. so they've so they've even given the kids the wrong methodology for figuring this problem out. Uh, Not just the wrong answer. They've given them the wrong. This is how they're well, saying. Yeah, this is in, how in you this solve specific, this. In this specific yeah. instance, under these conditions, it was. Yeah. It, it was an incorrect way to get to the answer. Right. However, which is even worse than just giving correct. the wrong answer. It, the formula is still correct. But it doesn't apply terms. to that problem. It doesn't apply to that problem. Right. So, uh, the, wow. form, the formula is useful for getting part of the force that is yeah. required, hmm. but it, but not all of it. Okay. Uh, there's another one on the 11th grade test, a couple more on the 11th grade test. Okay. Uh, question number 45, um, st it, I'll state it here. It says, if a force of 100 newtons was exerted on an object and no work was done, the object must have, and then it's a complete the answer, accelerated rapidly, remained motionless, decreased its velocity, or gain momentum. Okay, now the question, if a force of 100 newtons is exerted on an object and no work was done, I assume, by the object, right? No no work was done by the force on the object. And, and, and they give okay. you a formula at the beginning of the test, okay. again, they give you the formula, both in words and in um, symbols, work equals force times distance. Okay. So, so if, if a force does no work, mm -hmm. uh, they were imagining that uh, the object must not have, under, must not have moved through any distance. Mm -hmm. Work must equal zero. Yeah. So, that, so that they, the answer that the state chose is that the object remained motionless. Right, yeah. And that's, that is contradicted by numerous simple counterexamples. Okay. For instance, if you have any object moving in a circle at constant speed, mm -hmm. like approximately the moon moving around the Earth under the influence of Earth's gravity, mm -hmm. the, the force is centripetal. It's the Earth's gravita gravitational force the motion of the moon is tan tangent to the circle, and since those are at right angles to each other, the object is not moving either towards, uh, either with the force or against the force. Okay. And so uh, that's a case where there is a force which does no work, but the object is not motionless. Hmm. And and in and there there are plenty of other simple counterexamples. Yeah. Whenever you move in a horizontal plane. Okay. Um, so in this case, this could have been clarified if they had just made the original question sentence, the original question, if they had worded it more precisely. Yeah, it turns out that this question has no correct, no correct answers are listed in this question. However, the state maintains that... Yeah. Is there a way that they could have re rewritten that question so that answer B would oh, have been the right answer? There are plenty of ways, um, but... But this but is just a case of the test being sloppily it, written. Uh, absolutely, and yeah. it, it's, it's, uh, it's a case where... If you're a student, you have, um, I mean, you have to answer the question that is presented to you yeah. without assuming uh, other ways that the question might have been written. Yeah. And it turns out that yeah, you gotta yeah. All take of what these given. all of these answers are sort of equally correct, but they're all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah. then there's some simpler. There's uh, somebody, um, uh, a school district employee at one of the districts up up near mm -hmm. Dallas saw the uh, letter that I had written to the former Commissioner of Education, Felipe Alanis, mm -hmm. who um, coincidentally resigned uh, a week after he received my letter. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mark! <laughs> so, Mark always strikes again. Any, anyway. Uh, no job is safe. When this, uh, <laughs> the letter that I had sent to him had gotten into the hands of a school district um, person up in Dallas, uh -huh. and that person contacted me. Uh, that person was didn't want 
their name to be known to the TEA because of mm -hmm. um, fear of, retro of retaliation of some sort. Oh, you're kidding. But me. that person that's crazy informed me of a problem in the fifth grade test, which I hadn't looked at yet. Fifth grade science test, because I was more focusing on what is the exit level yeah. um, of science and math. Do you get this crazy feeling that on like every grade level there's going to be something wrong? Well, actually, no, because I've I've read through all the math and science tests okay. at every grade. Okay. And uh, not all of them have have mistakes only only a few of them see now to me that is that, that is insane i mean this you would think okay that uh, you know the, the 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 state board of education would want to fix these things they would want to have right answers on their test it, it amazes me that some That's teacher right. is yeah, fearing I mean, for his you, job you've because got, he's fearing retaliation if he points out you made a mistake on this test you've got several hundred thousand kids across the state of texas taking each of these tests i i, I can't conceive yeah. why he would have that fear i mean that's for being responsible that's like, well because it would cost a hundred million dollars to change to correct these tests it's easier to get rid of the one who's causing the problem well it's in the benefit he sues you. <laughs> independently, independently of what the yeah. Texas Education Agency decides to do with regard to giving mm -hmm. children credit or, or taking credit away, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just trying to get them to admit that there are mistakes so that people are not going into the future under the, under the misconception mm -hmm. um, that the answers that, that the incorrect answers are correct. Yeah. 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 No. Oh, these people are going to have a hard time competing. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a dog in the fight with. You know, I don't have yeah. a kid. You know, any kids yet? So yeah. yeah. Not a, yeah. Um, yeah. So you're, you're just coming at this strictly from you know. Let's make sure that strictly the facts from, are out there. From, sure. from truth. Yeah. 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 Kids are being educated correctly and properly. So here's That's an enough. example of a. Uh, here's a, here's an example of this is the question that the uh, school district employee brought to my attention on the fifth grade science test. It says it says the sixteenth question on that test. Light traveling through a pair of eyeglasses is, mm -hmm. that's to complete the sentence, refracted, mm -hmm. transmitted, absorbed, reflected. Okay. And it turns out that uh, at, <laughs> least, at, least, at least two of those are correct. The mm -hmm. state said that uh, refracted is the correct answer. Okay. Uh, transmitted is also certainly correct because... Yeah. Um, Light, light traveling, uh, light is transmitted from wherever it comes to wherever it goes, yeah. including yeah. Uh, through a pair of eyeglasses. So yeah. there's no doubt that so that's and, correct. That the eyeglasses would not have changed the fact that it was being transmitted in the first place. No, no. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's still light, being transmitted. Yeah, transmitted but, is a generally correct thing uh, to say when you're talking about light traveling. Okay. And absorbed and reflected, those those things can also happen, mm -hmm. not to all of the light that passes through the, the mm -hmm. eyeglasses, but to some of it. If you have, if you have, if you're wearing sunglasses, some of that light will be. So here's a case yeah. of a, well, that's even, a even. that's a case of a question that has yeah. multiple correct answers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, while uh, looking so that's at just sloppiness. Yeah, yeah. And while looking at at uh, the question that she that this person brought up, oops. <laughs> um, I happen to find another mistake on the fifth grade science test. <laughs> oh man! Which, uh, ah. or at least I suspected that it, was, that it might be a mistake. Yeah. And uh, callers, by the way, hang on. We've already got one person on the line, and we're going to get to you here in a minute. But we're just going to we, we let the calls rack up at the beginning of the show, and then we'll, we'll in, get in to fact, you in like. Two, why don't, why don't two we minutes. let the callers try and figure out what the uh, problem with this problem is? Okay, we'll do that, and then we'll start going to calls. Okay, uh, this this is problem thirteen on the fifth grade science test. It state it it asks. Which two planets are closest to Earth? Hmm. And uh, got to take into account the fact that this test was given uh, around the end of April, early May of 2003. Okay. Possible answers are okay. A, Mercury and Saturn. Okay. B, Mars and Jupiter. Mars, okay. C, Mercury and Venus. And D, Venus and Mars, and we can repeat that later, or yeah. we can. Uh, yeah, we'll just. We'll, 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 anybody who calls in, we can. Uh, repeat yeah, we'll repeat that. And, and so, yeah, when you call in, in addition to whatever you want to talk about, uh, we'll uh, yeah see if you can give an answer, to that. and then at the end of the show, we'll reveal what the correct answer is. Okay, but hint, the time frame during which the test was given is is an important clue. So, yeah. So, which two planets are closest yeah. to the Earth? Yeah. My, my, question, only, my, huh? only, my only concern with some of these problems is I'm wondering if 
the best answer. They always say, you know, what is the best answer? Because because a lot of times in tests they do have two or three which are technically correct, mm -hmm. but one of them is clearly the best answer. Mm -hmm. It's the most correct, and so. It more specifically applies to the situation that they've set up. Yeah. 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 So. So I think what we found is in a lot of these questions, it just has to do with sloppy wording in the questions. And yeah. uh, oh, well, but again, a, a pair of eyeglasses. The best answer I would definitely have to say would be refracted. Technically, it does transmit, it does reflect and, and absorb. But oh, okay, well, uh, you, then you've just uh, okay. <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's, here's, here's an here's a big slug here. The physicist is gonna. Here's, here's another question you, okay. then. The real well, guy. we need to get to college okay. quickly, so let's let's just uh, one more question that the callers can. Uh, but, well, well, we're gonna we're just gonna do the astronomy one for the callers because this one looks okay. like it's pretty complex. That, that, well, this one's easy. For a car traveling at a speed of 50 miles per hour, the relationship okay. between the distance traveled and the time traveled is described by the function d equals 50t. So which it's distance equals 50 times the amount of tra time travel. Yeah, which okay. statement is true? Okay. The time traveled depends on the distance traveled. Okay. The distance traveled depends on the time traveled. And then the other two are false. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so that those two are both correct? Those are equally correct. Yeah, they, they, they're interrelated, right? Well, the time well, travel depends on the distance traveled, and the distance traveled depends on the time that's travel. That's right. They're, and they're, of, course, they're, uh, of course, yeah. the state shows that the, time, the distance traveled depends on the time traveled, and they are disallowing yeah. the, that the time traveled depends on the distance traveled. Because it looks nuts. like they're reading that equation, d equals 50t, literally. True. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, but you could... That is the inverse of a function t yeah. equals one fiftieth d. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're so, inverses of right, each other. So they're both they're, right. They're so. equally true. Yeah. So again, this is just, it's just, these are just sloppily written, clumsily put together and, tests. And uh, I don't, I forget how many students were not given credit for the other correct answer, <laughs> but, it, yeah. but it was in the in the rough. I guess uh, for this one, about sixty thousand students. Great. Well, we should wow. go back and uh, fix that at the cost of uh, millions of dollars. I guess. So, yeah, you're right. Okay. Well, well, so we'll see if they can answer if, if any of our callers. On Stephen has been on hold for quite a long time, and we appreciate everybody being very patient. But four seven seven two two eight eight is that number to call us up live. And uh, hey, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hello there. Hi. Say, I uh, really appreciate your, your program, uh, <clears throat> but I'd like to make a comment and, uh, and ask you a question. Sure. Uh, uh, the question, I mean, the comment was about earlier on the show you mentioned about uh, Islam and, and Catholic and, uh, mm -hmm. and Robert Shuler, I believe. Uh, those are not Christians. He, he spoke oh. at my, my high school commencement. His daughter was in my high school class out in California. Robert Shuler? He really? Yep. Wow. That must have been interesting. Well, they, they live about uh, less than two miles from my uh, the house where I grew up. Wow, interesting. Well, he, so, he's, he's not a Christian preacher. Uh, Robert Shuler? Right. He I didn't preach on hell. Well, he, does he worship Jesus? Not the real Jesus, but he doesn't, he doesn't okay, preach so it's about the, hell. So, well, it's, so it's the real Christian argument. He's not a real Christian, therefore he doesn't yeah. count. I mean, if, he, if he's not, I seem to, yeah, the, the, the gist of your point that I, I think you're making is that he doesn't practice Christianity the way you do, so you don't consider him a real Christian. No, he, he doesn't believe the Bible if he doesn't preach the gospel, the full gospel. He doesn't believe in a real Jesus because he doesn't. He doesn't uh, believe in hell. He won't preach about hell. Okay. So what, Connor? Yeah, I mean, that, that seems to me that that's a, that's a matter that you should take up with him. Yeah, is he in know? the news or something like that, that they yeah. bring him up specifically? I mean, we, yeah. Well, y'all were, and I respect your opinion. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I, but I think we ought to have a gentlemanly conversation. And, and y'all have the, the market corner, y'all are laughing about non-Christians. Thinking they are Christians, when Tom, not Christians. you know, he considers himself. You know, if he wants to call himself, some, if someone comes up to me, yeah. or if someone presents himself on television in a big, in a robe, standing behind a podium, you know, with a Bible open, uh, you know, playing the part of preacher. If someone tells me I believe in Jesus, I'm a Christian, I'll take their word for it. Yeah. You know, whether you think they're the proper kind of Christian or not, that's your issue that you need to deal with with them. Yeah. Well, I, okay? I go by the Bible. Yeah. Which it, it's up to you. Of the you know, Bible. I'm sure. I'm sure. But, Robert but it Schuller, can't be. But it can't be our job to say. Hey, this yeah. is what a real Christian is, and this and everybody else isn't. Right, but you know, you're making atheist. fun of Christians on Absolutely. your show. You're laughing at Christians on your show. We no. think they are misguided. Yes, uh, we we would prefer to put our faith in in predictions of science, and which, which is a lot. Doesn't require faith.
<laughs> yeah, but I mean, the point you're, is, the, you're entitled to do that if you want to. But the point is, caller, that this this is not this is not an issue that's really of a concern to us, right? I mean, you know, if we we are well aware that there are there are certain groups of Christians who don't like other groups of Christians. Uh, you know, fundamentalist Protestants don't think Catholics are real Christians. Mainstream Christians don't think that Mormons are real Christians. And no one seems to like the Jehovah's Witnesses in the mainstream church. <laughs> you know, in fact, the, in the, the Baptist churches one the one Baptist church won't like the other Baptist church down the block. But these little inter interfaith squabbles don't really matter to us. If anything, it's a thing that we can point to and say, look, these folks claim that they have this one great truth that is that is handed down from a divine, omniscient, all-powerful source, and yet they're having all of these squabbles amongst themselves. So, you know, this is just one more reason for us not to take the whole shebang seriously. But my advice to you is, if on the, on the subject of Robert Schuller, we don't care. Okay, if he comes, if he says something in one of his books or in a television broadcast that we think is worth criticizing, we'll criticize that thing that he says. But as far as you not thinking he's a proper Christian, great. That's you're entitled to that opinion, but it's not really a concern of ours. Write him and tell him, Doctor Schuler, you're not a real Christian, and you guys duke that out. That's you know, it's not really an issue for us to that we that we really care well, about. I understand that, and I respect that. But okay, what all right. So is if you. If you're going to laugh about Christians and put them down on his show, be, be, uh, respect us for what we believe as well as we respect you because it's a God-given right. Well, you, well we, we don't think it's God-given. But. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we give people, okay, I, uh, I respect people, but I only give beliefs or opinions or actions, the respect they deserve. Okay, you won't hear us, you know, we don't mock people just to mock them. If, if some preacher comes out and says some ridiculous thing, or if he commits a crime, you know, like swindling the church or child molestation or what have you, if, some, if someone does something worthy of being condemnation, that's when you'll hear us condemning an individual. And as far as criticizing the belief system, that's what we do. We bring up critiques of the belief system, and then people are allowed to call and debate us and tell us where they think we're wrong. Okay, but the, so that's what we do. But we're not just here you know, to you know, just to respect it. My, yeah. comment, my, my comment was that you were uh, everybody you were talking about are not Christian. But, but that's just your... not one him, just not him alone. But you were talking about Islam and we and think we think that Islam. pretty much all religions. We have not heard of any religion yet. Christianity is not a religion. Well, isn't uh, it? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Uh, and what, what, what would it be then? It's a it's a uh, relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, does it does, uh, does it does it involve the organized act of worship of of a, a deity or a spiritual leader? The only true God, Jesus Christ. So it does involve that organized act of worship. That's but, Christianity. Of, wait, just yes or no? Christianity involves the organized act of worship of a deity. Yes or no? It's not a deity. It's the only deity. Okay. Well, it okay. doesn't matter. I, I just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a yes or no question. Does Christianity involve the organized worship of the deity? Right. Okay. Well, okay. then, according to the right. English language dictionary, Christianity is a religion. Because if you look in the dictionary under religion, it will say that it involves an organized act of worship or reverence towards a deity or spiritual leader. So well, Christianity is technically a religion. Now, if you want to say that yours is a better religion than other religions because you've got the deity or you have you have a, a personal relationship with your God, again, fine. That's your belief. You know, uh, yes, we don't but, share it. But but to, but Christianity is just as much of a religion as Islam, as as Raelianism, as whatever else. The fact that you have your religion and don't believe in the others doesn't make yours not a religion. But you you can look in Webster dictionary and some of those don't even know who Jesus is. They got the wrong definition for okay. Jesus. Doesn't okay, matter. so then what is your definition of religion? Just everything else besides Christianity? Religion religion is man's way of trying to present him to God as worthy to okay, go to so his the, heaven. So then the way you do that is by getting down on your knees and praying to your your buddy Jesus. Yeah. I mean isn't isn't he's my God. Yeah, my and is, he's your buddy. He yeah. created the universe and he's your best friend. And, and isn't isn't praying isn't Pray the act of Father in Jesus' name. Is, isn't isn't the act of prayer a way of a human is isn't the act of prayer a human being trying to ingratiate themselves to their God, like you just described. Isn't exactly. that a religious act? No, you got a little <laughs> really wrong here. Okay. All right, all right whatever. You well, can pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And that and also so if okay, you pray to the, the Father that the same thing. If you pray to the Father not in Jesus' name, would that make it not a religious act? Right. 
Absolutely, it'd be wrong because it's like putting a stamp on a letter. If you don't put the stamp on the letter, it don't go anywhere. Do you worship Jesus? Right. Okay. So, okay. So again, according to the dictionary, Absolutely. religion being the organized act of worship of a deity or a spiritual leader, it's a religion. I mean, just well, uh, the, no, the, the English you language have is a bad dictionary. Uh, like, well, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but the oh, comment. Oh, let, me, let me ask you a question, and then I'll let you go. Uh, okay. I really, really appreciate talking with you. I sure. No uh, problem. That's we're still friends, you know. Oh yeah. But uh, the question is, uh, I asked you one time before if we all would like to debate with the. Uh, the Christian answers are are in defense of the faith. Uh, we have had at least one of the one of those guys has called one of the guys from the show has called our show at least on one occasion that I know of. He was extremely disagreeable and hostile. He just he just shouted over us, wouldn't let us get a word in edgeways. Uh, so I don't. Christian answers or in defense of the faith. One of the guys from one of the Christian shows on the air, and I um, I'm. Not quite sure which one it was, but well, these people uh, are not those, that way. Those, na those names are familiar. But the point is, um, as you know, we are here every Sunday to debate these issues with folks who want to call us over the telephone. As far as getting into some sort of formal debate over the existence of God, um, you know, the way I see it is, I don't, I don't, I don't know that it's necessary to go to all that trouble. If the guys on one of the other uh, television shows, one of the Christian shows, have have evidence, have you know, actual proof that they can present uh, of their God, then just present it to us. Yeah. We, right? don't need, we don't need a debate. As soon as God yeah. comes down on the show, we're out of here. Or, 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 or any, sort, any, evolution is, any is, sort of any sort of credible evidence, you know, uh, just, just for, for the existence of a deity, all you need to do is present that. We'll be happy to look at it. A debate's not necessary in terms of, well, I think this and well, I think that. All Christians need to do is prove their God exists. So, you know, if the God's all-powerful, that should be a very simple matter for them. Well, you... you you okay. saved by grace through faith. Right, right, right. Well, you have have faith. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's, that's, yeah, well, you usually it shouldn't back require faith to, you know, base your life on it. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate talking with you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks very much, okay. and uh, talk to you later. Yeah, I mean, see, that's, that's why these debates are completely pointless, right? Because ultimately yeah. you always get, you, the, the believer will always back into the, you well, you have to believe. It's just on faith. So that's yeah. why, I mean, it's just, so again, let's just, just give us some good hard evidence, you know, like, you know, when, when scientists was out there trying to prove magnetism and trying to prove quantum mechanics, you know, they, they put all their ducks in a row and presented the evidence for those propositions, and they successfully was. predict uh, the results of experience, yeah. experiments. Yeah. yeah, so come come up with an experiment to prove the existence of your God, and then just do it, not a problem. I decided that I uh, wasn't going to ask uh, Stephen about, uh, you know, the little... <laughs> Mars and Venus and the planetary thing. I was just not. <laughs> <'Cause he> was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he, he was signed up before we got into that. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we just uh, didn't need to. And now Donald is another guy who's been holding very uh, patiently. So we appreciate it. Hey, we thanks for holding. You're on the air. Hey man, what's going on? We're just hanging. I'll make a comment real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, there's no religion higher than the truth. That's, that's one point I like to make, and I like to comment on this. Uh, Ten Commandments in your own Okay. Is your is your television? I'm sorry, to interrupt you, Donald. Is your television turned up? I think so. Let me turn it down. Yeah, because yeah. you're feeding back on us, and okay. so we can't really understand you. Okay. Um, I just want to comment on, on the situation in uh in uh in uh Alabama about the Ten Commandment laws. Uh huh. I find it very strange that these people are ranting and raving about the Ten Commandment laws, but just speak to years ago, these were the same folks in Alabama who didn't allow black folks to ride the bus. These, these were the same people down there who were exactly. very mean to people of black, Hispanic origin. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, you, you hit the, you hit the a bullseye on that one. Yeah. Good for you, Donald. And, yeah. And then I have, and then I think you said this last week, how this judge wants to use his position to uh, force this religious belief on people. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> I personally believe in God, but I, I see where these people are using religion to manipulate the masses. Yeah. And all I say is let's get to the truth of the matter, because in the Bible, you know, it says that Moses, he wrote those Ten Commandment laws because the people of Israel were so well, I think that the ma the matter is whether whether you believe in the Ten Commandments or not, right. whether whether you're Christian or not. Right. Uh, the point is that what's going on in Alabama is that you have this judge, Judge Roy Moore, who right. is using this incident right um, for his own, essentially the, the advancement of his political career. True. 
Okay, okay there's a thing that, that, that can't be overlooked, and that is two years ago when this monument was snuck into the building under the cover of darkness. Right. So he knew what was going, he knew what he was doing was wrong. Okay. Right. Um, and the, uh, the, at the time, this, this whole little process, this little sneaky process, this was videotaped. They, they yeah. videotaped the installation of this. Right. And then the, the videotape uh, was made by an organization called Coral Ridge Ministries, which is Dr. D. James Kennedy. He's a tele big televangelist. Right. And they immediately... After this tape was made and after the monument was installed two years ago, started uh, selling those tapes right. through the ministry with the proceeds from the sales of those tapes going to Judge Roy Moore's legal defense fund. Exactly. So I mean, so right away he had like this legal defense fund being built up because he knew that this was going to happen. Right. So this whole incident, I think the whole the, this entire flap, this whole you know confrontation in Alabama was planned to be right. like this by him. I mean, he he deliberately machinated this. The confrontation, yeah, so that he, he this is all going to happen. He can make him himself up to be this great, uh, you know, Christian martyr and defender of God. Yeah. Sure. And then what? He, I, I'll bet you. I'll bet you. You know, five will get you ten. Next uh, Alabama governor's election, he's going to run. Hey, yeah. I bet you he's going to run, and he's going to run as the the great defender of the Ten Commandments, and try to get into uh, the governor's chair that way. And Versus I'm, in jail, which is where he should be. And <laughs> well, I want to make one jobless. comment. I want to make okay. one comment to all those Christians who, who are listening. Uh huh. Um, I believe Jesus said that these Ten Commandment laws are supposed to be written in your heart and mind. So it, it really doesn't need to be out on nobody's. Uh, you know, government platform. If you have that so-called true Christ belief, it needs to be written in your heart and mind. And well, Jesus, the, Jesus did say, I believe in the book of Matthew, that right. like when you pray, you should go into your closet. True. It's a exactly. private matter between yeah. you and yeah. 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 And all of this, he said, don't be like the hypocrites out there right. Right. Exactly. doing it on the street corner. True. So you know, so the all the the, the the theocrats who are out there pushing these Ten Commandments, monuments, and the prayer in school, and all the rest of it. Well, they're not uh, they're not following Jesus's word. Doesn't seem like to me. So. True. So, right, hey. we appreciate your call, Donald. We're going to go ahead and get on to the next person, okay? Hey, um, I thought, hey, I thought, I, I thought that you asked one of those questions about the uh, Mercury and Venus. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, you want to yeah, take that? Uh, again, yeah. uh, Mark, the question is, which two planets are closest to Earth? And the possible answers that the state listed are Mercury and Saturn, right. Mars and Jupiter, Mercury and Venus, uh -huh. or Venus and Mars. Well, uh... Common sense tells me because I'm not that far out of school, it would be Mercury and Venus. Okay, Mercury and Venus is your answer. So we're going to go ahead and mark you down for C. Right. Okay, and at the end of the show, uh, in about half an hour, we'll give Probably everybody the, the correct answer, okay? All right, Pete. Thanks, man. Thanks, All right. Take care. Okay, so that's Steve for Donald. All okay. right, so. Okay, uh, John on line three is next, correct? Yes, and then we're still waiting on the name for line one. Hey, you're on the air? Uh, how you doing? This is John. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I was calling. I just caught your show here. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily against or with what y'all are saying. I'm not really too familiar with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you were speaking on religion earlier, and, and you were telling one guy the definition of it. Mm -hmm. What do what, what y'all define y'all's organization is, and, and what do y'all hope to accomplish by this show, by, by taking calls, by anything? Uh, we're here to uh, encourage, obviously, free thought and debate. Um, our organization, uh, we... Um, it's mainly it's a social organization. This is an opportunity for atheists in the Austin area to get to know one another, to meet, and what have you. And then uh, through the organization, some of our members uh, get involved in various different things. We have uh, people who are very activist on the political scene. We have people who are very involved in education. Uh, that the organization is is mostly just a way in which uh, atheists can in this area can get to meet and get to know other atheists. And again, the purpose of like the Lions Club. Well, well, it's I don't know. I guess it's just uh, it's it's a club mainly. It's a yeah, social, it's, it's a it's social group first social. and foremost. It's mostly social. We do have other opportunities yeah. though. If you want to get more political, uh, the textbook hearing. There, a lot's going on with that right now. We have a lot of people that are that are reading textbooks and are going to the hearings and putting their word in. Yeah. Uh, people who are going to different protests and stuff like that about ch uh, church and state separation. So you can do a lot more if that you know in the group if you want to. But there are a lot of people who come and just you know hang out at bagels and play games. Yeah. So. So yeah, that's a, so. And the purpose of the show, of course, is a to to be the outreach to the Austin community, just to let other atheists know, oh, there's an atheist group, and then believers call us up, and uh, you know, we'll we'll ask us questions and we'll debate them, and it's fun. Okay, the uh, the guy sitting to your left there, what's his saying? He ain't really said much. Well, Mark is oh, our uh, partner. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I'm a PhD in physics, and I'm, I have a BS in physics and a BS in chemistry. I have co-authored a 
a uh, well-known quantum mechanics textbook that's been used at the graduate level at Ivy League, University of California, University of Texas schools, and that has been, uh, it's now in its third edition, uh, and it's available all, all over the world. So I'm basically a scientist. Yeah. And you are one of our members who gets involved in uh, yeah, on the political yeah. spectrum in terms of improving the quality of education, which is what... During, uh, during the most recent... Session of the Texas Legislature, I got a bill sponsored that would allow um, kids in elementary school to permanently keep their math and science books, as is the practice in the highly achieving Asian countries. And their, the books over in those countries are as much as, for instance, in Korea compared to Texas, are as much as uh, 13, 14 times less expensive than the books here. And so uh, it seems like a good idea to me. And the kids are, are able to keep. Now, how, how many of them are are y'all? Is it just the three of y'all? Oh, we're all, no, we're all over the place. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no the, the ACA as a group, in terms of membership, I think, uh, usually has around oh, about... Oh, this guy again. Yeah. So it usually has around right. about 100. Carl, do you have a, do you have a, do you have a, like a, 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 like a question for us? I mean, do you want to, is there anything, I mean, else you want to talk about? Because we got a lot of folks lined up. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Your phone just looks like it's ringing off the hook there, partner. Bye, asshole. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, David. Hey, you're on the air. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I just uh, I got a tune on Cheer Station on TV, mm -hmm. and um, I am just really intrigued on how you can actually you, you can think you can get uh, people's attention by um, by trying to tell people about how uh, there's no God. Well, we well, got God yours. listening to you right now. We got yours, didn't we? We got yours, didn't we? Well, yeah, but so I don't really twerk it. The fact is that God created you. Ah. And then... No, see, I was... not that slap in the face to him with the one well, you actually... You, no, I was, created, I was created by the big magic rabbit named Phil. My creator was the big magic invisible rabbit named Phil. That's my creator. Okay. Are you slapping Phil? Are you slapping Phil in the face, Color? Yeah. Color, are you slapping Phil in the face? Not necessarily, sir. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. See, the point is, okay, there, there is, um, you know, there's this thing here in this country that you know we have. It's called freedom of speech, and it allows people like us to get on. We talk, and then guys like you call us up and you ask us questions. So, do you actually have a question for us? Yes, and uh, actually, it's, it's more than that. Um, if y'all are actually uh, against any God whatsoever... Well, no, no. Hang on, let him finish. Um, who are you actually looking up to? Is it uh, the government? Or is it just no one? Because I'm looking at the... Well, here, the... Uh, interesting question. The, uh, the whole... What is interesting is that I mean, we talk to a lot of theists. We talk to a lot of theists, right? And mm -hmm. it, it, what I generally hear from a lot of them is that they have a difficult time comprehending how somebody cannot have some all power, all powerful supreme authority figure mm -hmm. that they look to, that they derive all of their ideas from, all of their beliefs from, all of their attitudes uh, from, and. Uh, when in, and, and that's that is what is is the appeal of God as an idea. It's this idea that you have some sort of celestial parents, some sort of father figure. Yeah. And we all grow up with parents, and then when you're an adult and you don't have the parents to look up to anymore, people still want to have and that feeling of looking for. And that's that's not independence, though. Yeah, but but it's not independence if if you are looking to some sort of deity, some sort of imaginary parent figure to give you the guidance in life that you need yeah. that you got when you were a child. You're still you still haven't sort of cut that umbilical cord. And, um, you know, the, so the, I, w w the function that God serves for adults is essentially to be a big parent for adults when they're real parents, they've moved out of the house and they've moved away and they have to make it through life. Exactly. You know? Um, you know, atheists, uh, atheists sort of, uh, you know, consider that human beings, we are all part of a big species and that we all need to work together. Species? And that we need to uh, cooperate and that we need to get along. Yeah. Okay. And so in that regard, you know, there are there are laws and there are rules that we have all put together in order to help people cooperate. And uh, we think that that's good enough. We think that human beings working together is what it's all about. Uh -huh. So, do so, you have a problem with that idea? Oh, no, but, you know, I'm telling Saddam Hussein, you know. Yeah. I don't think he wants to uh, work with us, uh, you know, he's Yeah, well, Saddam Hussein isn't and in a business lot of, anymore. And a lot of other people in the world got together and said, we don't like how he's doing business and put a stop to it. Yeah. You know, that's how the world works. Yeah. Do, do, do you uh, support Saddam Hussein, or uh, do you 
Uh, what kind of question is that? Yeah. What kind of question right. is that? He's a, he's a, he's a tyrant who is uh, responsible for the deaths of hundreds of exactly thousands and of people. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. It's beside the point. I have no idea whether he, whether yeah whether he's Muslim whether he's atheist whether he believes in UFOs it doesn't matter I mean he's a guy who uh, wasn't doing business very nicely and and got taken out of business so hey uh, caller that's beside the point caller would you like to try your your uh, your luck at this uh, planetary question I'm sure you'll ace it sure okay, okay. Um, the question again is which two planets are closest to Earth and the possible answers listed here are Mercury and Saturn Mars and Jupiter. Mercury and Venus, or Venus and Mars? Venus and Mars. Okay, and your name again was? David. He's David. David, okay. He, you're, you're down for Venus and Mars. Okay, okay. thanks, Dave. All right. Okay, well, uh, if you have any more questions, if not, we're going to go ahead and go on the next guy, okay? Um, and, uh, uh, All right, that's a no. Okay, Michael's on, too. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're having fun. What's going on? Uh, I just got a quick question. You got... Do you guys believe in going to church or anything like that? Well, obviously not. No. We're atheists. No. Okay? okay, so you have another question? Well, you believe in getting together in organized groups and discussing your beliefs, right? Well, we certainly like to, uh, you know, discuss religion. Yeah, discussing religion and stuff But we like discuss that. a lot of stuff. Up, but, yeah. Okay, but you discuss your beliefs with each other, right? Well, no. what you guys, I mean, obviously yeah. you guys have the same beliefs. No, 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 really. be sitting together right here, uh, right? I, I would say that we have pretty varied political yeah, beliefs, yeah. even on this uh, table here. Yeah. We have wildly, on, different on the topic beliefs. wildly different political beliefs. On the topic beliefs. of atheism, we are in agreement. But However, right. that is simply the lack of belief in a God. Okay. There's a wide playing field out there for everything else, and let's and you know yeah. we get into it over that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'll get there. In fact, if you hit the right a small if, town, if, I'm from a small town. Yeah, and, and um, you know, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm from Arkansas. I'm pretty Wow. They got churches on every corner, That's like small town. Yeah. Yeah. McDonald's, <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, it's true. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, you know, I've been in Austin for like for the last three years, and you know, it's it's a new experience for me. You know, and I've heard about atheism and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I study you know a lot of different religions, or people's ideas mm -hmm. and beliefs. Mm -hmm. And to me, atheism was kind of like it was weird. It was like a whole bunch of different people get together, discuss their ideas of what they don't believe in, but yet and still they're talking about stuff something that they simply believed in in an organized fashion. Yeah. Like so, what? Like, I mean, atheists believe in different things. You'll get, oh, you'll yeah, get see, conservative atheists. The idea of atheism is not to have any beliefs in anything. Well, the idea, no, of atheism has to do with not believing in God, and that's all it means. If you're, if, to not believe in God, that's all that atheism covers. Beyond okay. that, you'll get... You can get conservative atheists, you'll get liberal atheists, you'll get atheists who are into, like, objectivism, you'll get atheists who okay. are into other philosophies. Oh, you're kind of like, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, Baptists. I mean, I'm just saying... No, 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 really. No, no. It's got nothing to do with that. Religion. Because, because, because with here, that. Here's, the, here's part of the difference, though. If you go to, let's say, a Bible study, yeah. then it's specifically looking at something... They're talking about, you know, John chapter 3 or whatever. Yeah. They're talking about something religious. If you... If you actually look at the discussions that go on down at the bagel shop meetings and when we get together, yeah. the lack of belief in a God doesn't come up mm -hmm. because we all agree on it, and so end of discussion. Yeah. We're talking about sports. About that. Or We're talking about absolutely yeah. everything else. You yeah. know, politics. Yeah. Uh, what, what other religions are yeah. doing? You know, what was on TV last night? The latest, you know, the latest twenty-four or whatever. So that's why atheism um, is so much so more. That's what we're talking about. You know, it very rarely is. You know, yeah. God, I don't think there's a God. Do you? No. Oh, cool. Well, actually, <laughs> that's about it. The state of mind. I well. Mean, you know, atheism is, is it's it's a thing that, you know, if you don't believe in gods, that's pretty much all it covers. And then above and beyond that, you, you know, people can disagree or agree on any number of other subjects. But, you know, atheism itself is fundamentally very, very simple. If you don't believe in God, then you're an atheist. And I would argue that just about everybody on the earth, to some degree, is atheist. I mean, if... You think that? Yeah. Yes, now, I do. where do you get that idea from? Do you believe in any of the ancient Roman gods? Yeah, I do. You do? Okay. Yeah. Do you believe in the ancient Egyptian gods? Yeah, I do. In fact, I'm half Egyptian, so yeah. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, then, uh, do, you, uh, is, uh, do you believe that uh, an invisible blue rabbit named Phil invented the universe? If it helps me, can, you know, balance out the rest of my life, yeah, I will. Okay. Wow. So, so you're so just a uh, pick so and choose kind of guy. Like, you know, like 150 gods hanging out in heaven all having a big old party? Probably. Hmm? Okay. Okay, then you're not naked. All right, well, then that's uh, fine for you. <laughs> I mean, but then again, I could just sit around and I, I just sit around also and I, you know, 
I'm talking about little demons, but also, I mean, God may, God himself may be no more than just a tiny particle floating around, you know, in the middle of nowhere, for all we know. All right. In which case, okay, yeah. we, we have the word for that. It's called dust. <laughs> Caller. 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 Caller's a dust speck. Caller, would you like to try our question about the planets? <laughs> a question about the what? The, yeah, uh, I don't think he was watching the beginning oh, of the show. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Yeah, we're going to actually go ahead and move on to the next guy. All so, right. yeah, if God's just a big dust melt floating around, who cares? All right. All right, take care. <laughs> okay. Well, that's handy. You just believe in everything. and you know. I know. That. See, now, that's that's what you call really hedging your bets, right? I mean, just go ahead and believe in every yeah. single religion there is just to cover your ass in case you die. Okay. Exactly. And, and contribute. And, and the actual God is... Uh, and yeah. contribute, too. Yeah, and, 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 and it turns out that the real boss is some, you know, is the God of some obscure, mm -hmm. you know... Some yeah, religion off in the, uh, in the Serengeti Plain somewhere that's, you know, just a few people living in mud huts worship. Yeah. You know, if he turns out to be the real guy, at least I'm covered. You know, just believe in all of them. That's how to do it. I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? I believe, Te technically, yeah. You know, you know, because if you're willing, if you're willing to entertain this ridiculous notion of you know invisible magic beings creating the universe, but then again, why stop at one? But then again, you've got to prioritize that list somehow because some yeah. gods, uh, again, Ten Commandments: I am the Lord that God have no other gods before me. So everybody else can be subservient to them. Yeah, but you know, Christians pick and choose the bits out of the Bible that they want, yeah, right? So. And, and even in the whole Ten Commandments, so uh, is Phil the Pink Rabbit more higher than God, or is he lower? Than God. Well, I think. Uh, well, well, which God? <laughs> See, I think. I think they're. I think they're Siamese twins. I think they're joined at the ears. God and Phil the Pink Rabbit. See, I think they're all okay. Uh, this is turning into a goofy show today, isn't it? Heather's on three. Let's see what she has to say. Hi, you're on TV. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Uh -huh. um, I really um, find your show very provocative. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, some days it's more so than others. <laughs> well, it's, you're you're good humored, and, and yeah. uh, I appreciate. I think this is an important dialogue. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps one of the, yeah. one of the most important dialogues uh, to have as human beings uh, with others. Um, let me ask you, uh, the word you refer to as uh, our humanity or our humanness as referring to ourselves as species, which mm -hmm. I understand the biological reference of that. Mm -hmm. um, my, you know, I'm not a biologist, this is a lay person's take on, on species behavior, but um, species seem to uh, care for their own. Mm -hmm. Exclusively, their own types, their own kindred, their own family. No, not exactly. Okay, address that because I'm concerned if we just see our humanity as this as species in this, this pure biological sense, that there may never be world peace because our ethnicities yeah. would yeah. inevitably always divide us, etc. So, yeah. talk. What are your What are your ideas about that? Well. Where does morality uh, come, uh, okay. come from? Okay. Okay. I mean, well, you know, moral behavior. Uh, no, no, it's a good one. Good. That's okay. easier. Uh, <laughs> um, in, in terms of different species, though, to really make a quick point here, um, are you under the impression that species do not work together or that they do? Well, that they work together but in cliques. I mean, uh, essentially taking care of their own. It's like, for instance, if, if, if we look at ourselves just as biological creatures and not, for instance, spiritual creatures that have a higher uh, moral ethos or calling, um, what is to draw me to someone who looks different from me, acts different from me, speaks a different language? What is really to compel me uh, to want to join or unite with this person? Mark, I know, I know you're a physicist and that's not really your field, but do you have a response to that? Um, well, common interests. Well, that's common interests and, yeah. and common and common needs that each other can fulfill. Yeah, uh, I think that it, it, it's an interesting point. I think uh, that certainly people do tend to band together in in groups that they're familiar with. Um, I think that our whole where, where our cooperative nature came from did have a lot to do with our biology, how we how we turned out biologically speaking. I mean, Homo sapiens as a species, as we were on the Bahamas, we were lucky enough to develop a really big brain, and a big brain allows you to develop things like language. Yes. And the minute you have language, you can put uh, concepts into abstract concepts into more or less concrete form. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you encounter each other like our ancestors did you you got people saying oh let's i have an idea let's get in a big group and let's hunt the big game 
instead of just all of us out there for ourselves scrambling for roots and grubs and berries. And so you had the spirit of cooperation and you know, people getting together, and then this is where you, you got tribes forming, and then this is where you got people starting to say, okay, now we need laws and we need rules in order to make the whole thing work. And then all of that more or less you know, came from there. Uh, but in terms of now what is to draw you to someone uh, you know, not like you right, uh, right away in terms of like, like what? Are you talking about different race or, oh. or a different creed? Or because there could be any any number of factors that you would have to weigh mm -hmm. when encountering somebody new or something or a situation or a person that you're not familiar with before determining, you know, like, like is this good for me and is this a situation I'll be safe in? And you're right, it won't always be you know, a circumstance where it's the right answer every single time, right? Well, I, I am a, I'm a historian, so uh -huh. I put my mind to the stories of, of how tribes and groups interact. And yeah. historically speaking, they don't do so very well, usually, yeah. um, when they're different but from each other. And um, I, well, I guess what, I, what, what appeals to me about the Christian fairy tale, mm -hmm. because let me say this, um, I wasn't there. I didn't meet the man, I, I would like you, and I'm perhaps being a bit more, I'm taking more liberties than perhaps you're willing to take by believing this tale. But what this tale enables my brain to do, and my human instinct, is it compels me beyond my borders, my psychological borders, my ethnic borders, my um, linguistic borders. Uh, it, it compels me into the lives of others through, without, please forgive the, the simplicity of this word, love. Mm -hmm. And for me, Christianity is a message of love, which I don't think is an instinctual biological need, except for one's own family. Yeah. So that's, well, well, that's why okay. I find it very compelling uh, and necessary. Okay, Mark. I, I think anybody can have those same feelings without being encumbered by... Uh, by the things for which there is no evidence. Well, don't, that's don't, you, don't you agree? Well, I wish, you know, I, honestly, since I haven't met Jesus Christ, I would love to be able to agree with you because I feel like in some ways you're a little saner than me because oh. <laughs> you're, you're not uh, having to, you're not feeling really, uh, I'm, I see, I'm tempted to believe in Christ. Right. There's a little loaded word because I don't think I really can love another the way I love my own son or husband and, and you know, blood relatives without this. But see, there's nothing unnatural about that. I mean, it, it is natural to have a higher degree of love or care or concern for the people who are either the immediate members of your family, your closest friends, what have you, than a total stranger. There's nothing unusual about that. Well, but Christ's message calls me to a love uh, beyond my own uh, familial border. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you see, so does... So do how we view the world, too. Now, what, what you're describing, it's, it's good for the commercials that deal with Christianity in terms of, you know, help, help feed the poor in Africa because Jesus says love everybody and stuff like that. But we also see a lot of people out there who say that I'm the right kind of Christian. They aren't. Mm -hmm. And so we should get rid of them. Oh, and basically, yeah. the right group of Christians becomes a really, really, really small group yeah. and everybody else is damned and you can kill them because yeah. they weren't really you know, doing anything good anyway. Yeah, like the problem that you described earlier on. You know, people getting into their little, their own little tribal group, yeah. and and uh, you know, viewing other tribal groups with disdain. You find that within religion, and not just from one religion to another, but even within the various denominations that exist within a single religion, such as Christianity. Um, that's right, and I. But I, I you'll get a guy. You'll get also get like this guy in Florida. What Paul Hill? What's his name? This. Yeah. This. This. Yeah. Uh, Guy who uh, you know, you know uh, sh walked into an abortion clinic with a shotgun, blew a couple guys away, and says that he was acting on behalf of God, right. and he's and, you and know, he would do it again if he could, and he'd do it again if he could, and this was like this this was his big uh, you know, and he feels that God loves him and he is at yeah. inner peace, and so you can see that, you know, other this is a message that you know while you're interpreting it a certain way that is very positive, that is you doing that interpretation, you are applying that interpretation, you're filtering it that way, and so. 
it seems to me then that the impetus towards love is within you. It would be there whether or not you encountered the message of Jesus or not. And oh, I wish I could say you're very you're very generous, but I, I wish I could say I, I think I think I've been with them long enough no. to know better than that. Well, no, 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 I mean, it, it, there's again, there's nothing unnatural with, but it, it, just in the interest of, for example, personal security, right? There's you know a total stranger for 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 the practical matters of personal security. You're all until you get to know that person, get acquainted, and say, what's this guy and what's he up to? You're going to be suspicious. You know, there's this any anybody who walks around life just you know walks down the street going, I love that's a, you know that person's just a fool. I'm sorry. I mean, you you will be taken advantage of. You'll be hurt. You know, someone who is that effusive and uncritical and you know uncareful about you know just accepting absolutely everyone that they see with this wide open armed expression of love. I think that's just foolish because well, Martin, uh, Christ himself said to his disciples, "Have a mind like a serpent, but a heart like a dove." <laughs> And I think that's something that um, is important. I, I don't, I don't think the person of Christ, if he was a historical figure, was himself not a rigorous man uh, with his own intellect. Well, Collar? Well, hang on. Would Before you, we get to that, because we're I'm, I'm not done. I want to make one more point, though, about Christianity being a message of love. And I have, I think there is one one thing that sort of throws a little monkey wrench. Okay. <laughs> in that whole premise. <laughs> All right. And that is this thing called the doctrine of hell. Okay. Okay. Belief in hell. Uh huh. Okay. The, essentially, the message of Christianity is that, at least the way it is preached in churches, in every Christian church in America. So I'm going to take it as the official stance of the faith. I have a comment on that. Yeah. Is that um, essentially, if you do not accept Christ as your Savior and become Christian and, and believe in God and believe that Jesus was resurrected, etc., 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 if you're an unbeliever or if you're a believer of some other faith, you get to go to hell forever. You get tortured for all eternity. Okay, that to me is not a message of love. Okay, that to me is not something that a loving God would do. Okay, loving beings don't set ultimatums for other people. Loving beings don't demand love back with like the threat of violence as a condition. Mm -hmm. You know, loving beings don't do that. If God really loved everyone, if there really is a God and he was this all-powerful loving being, you know, he would not demand compliance with one particular fan club. Okay, he would not demand this uh, this act of worship, uh, this act of obeisance every Sunday. Okay, that to me that sounds like a God who has some very deep rooted insecurities. Mm -hmm. And it's not a, it's not an expression of love. I mean, if if okay, Let's say you have a boyfriend, okay, and your boyfriend tells me, or tells you, your boyfriend tells you, Heather, I love you with all of my heart. You are the only woman for me in my life. And so help me, if you ever try to leave me, I will break your neck. Okay? Okay, now, <laughs> this is not a guy, is this, is, is this a loving man? Is this a man you want to spend the rest of your life with? I don't think so. No, okay. this is what you just described. That's very insecure. Okay. Yeah. And a dangerous man, and a bad person who doesn't really love you, okay? Well, because that's not love. That's not love when someone says, "I love you, and you better love me back, or I'll hurt you." Now, can I? But this is this is essentially the message of Christianity: yeah. worship God, accept Jesus as your Savior, or you will suffer this eternity in hell. And I don't consider that a message of love. I consider that, to, that uh, almost to be a terroristic message. You know, it's an ultimatum: do what I say, give me what I want, or I'll hurt you. Uh, Martin, you know. yes. I think you, you've accurately, uh, I, I think, you know, uh, conclude, uh, yeah, summarized, excuse mm -hmm. me, um, a large message of the, the you know, the hell message. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally have been a born again Christian for 25 years, and mm -hmm. um, even as recently this last year, as I've been going over the scriptures again mm -hmm. um, and just encountering the love of God in my own life. Um, I've taken this uh, to the scripture, and what I found is interesting. Um, there's a Paul writes to Timothy in the Gospels and says that God desires the souls of all men, and reconciling that desire, if it were true, if this is a God, if this God exists, and if He desires the souls of all men, meaning humankind, mm -hmm. then um, how can He be so? Um, supercilious uh, and casual about throwing souls away. Um, in, and I don't believe that um, the scriptures, the gospel scriptures, they do allow, Paul also mentions that there are some that will know, come to know God through nature, uh, through um, just the so contemplative to, life. Yeah. And I think uh, that if there is a God, it is certainly, and if he were the maker, mm -hmm. 
then he can be the judge. Now, your boyfriend analogy fails there because my boyfriend would not have been my maker or my, therefore could not be my judge. It doesn't matter. That's, that's, that's the material. What it is, we're talking about expressions of love. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about what, what is love really? How does love express itself? I submit to you that love does not express itself with threats. Okay, love does not demand you know, I agree, that it be returned upon the threat of violence. Well, and Jesus Christ, if we look at his life as a historical figure, did not threaten uh, anyone he spoke to. Jesus believed in the doctrine of hell. I mean, did, did, Jesus believe, did Jesus believe in hell or not? I do think that he did. Uh, well, it's funny, but uh, Thomas Jefferson actually took the words of Christ and he extracted them and, and made his own sort of new right. testament yeah. scripture that he carried around. And when you read just Christ's word... Um, he does speak of a of an afterlife. He does speak that there will be a judgment. Mm -hmm. um, I do not believe that he talks. He ever describes a picture where there is a line of people uh, walking into a lake of fire. <laughs> well, how, well, whether, fashion, well, whether or not Jesus after being judged. whether or not Jesus existed and actually vocalized the bad parts of the story are immaterial. They're, they're still there. They're still supportable in the Bible. Well, I think a lot of them have been um, uh, uh, by preachers and mm -hmm. by uh, just human beings. Right. They've taken a lot of this message and they've distorted it for right. political and, and selfish purposes. Right. Well, and, and unfortunately, you might be a casualty of that. Your own, your own knowledge and hostility might be a casual of, of people who have manipulated truth. Uh, well, here's, here's the problem. Well, but see, thank, thank you for being patronizing. I don't think she meant to be that, but I do think, though, that the problem that my immediate question is, of course, if that's the, why would God allow that? Okay, why would God allow the ministers of his own faith, I mean, the people who are supposedly the men of the cloth, his representatives on earth, He's not to, allowed distort, to, Martin, you and I are talking right to distort now. his word in that way? <laughs> Okay, well then, I, either either there are priests, there are pastors, there are ministers out there in churches distorting the word of God and telling people things that... And there are, 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 there are. Okay, well then, if there are, my question is, why is this all-powerful deity allowing that? It's very puzzling. I mean, God should, you know, tap, 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 don't say that, here's what I meant. Well, because then he would be controlling and we would be automatons and robots. No, no how? Answer. How, how, the, the, how police, the police tell people every day, do not speed or you go to jail. I've seen lots and lots of speeders out there. I'll do it. Okay. Okay, I, I want to take your test. I see you motion. Okay, I know. Okay. I, I really wants to do that. But we're, we're, we're going to no, we, address that actually, next time. Actually, we, we might need to give the question, the answers, right? You've got announcements to do, too, right? Well, it's, it's, uh, we're getting done the last two minutes. Okay, well, I, I won't take hey, Heather, why don't you just uh, call us back at, uh, some, uh, at some point, okay? Just okay, uh, Martin, we'll, we'll keep you. this conversation. Very okay, interesting. Okay, so let me, uh, let, me, to... let me give the basic answer. The basic answer is that on the day of the test, mm -hmm. the planet Mercury, which is closest to the sun, was also the closest planet to Earth. Mm-hmm. And then came Mars in respect to how close it was to Earth, mm -hmm. and then Venus. Okay. And so it turns out that uh, of the two answers, C and D, that our callers gave, C was Mercury and Venus.